Lance Brown with Growth Towers again. So today's video is going to be on the HP uh, Elite Book 640 G9, I believe it was, that we did the unboxing of before. I'll try and remember to link that up here, but I may forget. Essentially, this is just a review of what we have experienced so far. So as stated in the previous video, there is a port for the power which it does come with power cable that connects to this port. There is a USB-C connection, two USB-A connectors, and an HDMI, as well as a headset jack, which does both the mic and the headphones. Now, the USB-C is supposed to be a Thunderbolt 4, so it is capable of outputting video as well as other things. You can buy docks and whatnot for it that will expand your functionalities. It is also capable of charging. In the previous video, I did state I was not certain because it did not include a USB-C charger. So it is capable of charging a laptop. Um, if you use a non-HP brand charger on it, it will specify that when, when it's charging. It'll actually give you a little pop-up that says that you're using a non-USB-C charger, um, non-HP USB-C charger that uh, may or may not be charging it properly, so you want to make sure that you get a HP one. There is also a third USB-A connection over here. You also have the half port of the Ethernet and then the Kensington lock. On the bottom, you've got ventilation as well as two pads to keep it steady and, and above ground so that it vents properly. When you open it, you have a 14-inch screen. Touchpad is actually pretty decent. It's not anything special. It is nice though. Um, you do have the sticker saying that it's an Intel i5 for the model that I have. And then HP Wolf security sticker because it is protected by the HP branded Wolf uh, security package. It is an elite book. You've got HP brand up here. You've got the camera up top here which has the slider for privacy. So you can close that off and it will not video anything. I believe this is where the speakers are. I have not used it for much in the way of any kind of uh, multimedia because I mostly use it for school and then a little bit of Discord. I have charged it so you can see the screen hopefully from there. It is a 1080p screen and when it loads up we'll take a look. Now I did notice that this specific model only came with 256 gigabytes of storage on an NVMe which was not enough for me personally. So I did upgrade that to a one terabyte. Let's see, go ahead and... There we go. It does have a fingerprint uh, scanner over here so that I have it set up for that. And you can hopefully see the quality of the screen. I believe it is IPS, but I'm not 100% sure. I know somebody on the previous video asked that. This specific laptop, however, is very very sensitive or not sensitive but uh, responsive so it does respond very well to all the commands that I give it I have not tried gaming on it yet but I do plan on trying some basic gaming I want to try PC simulator I have the older original one and I want to try and install that on it because I am a I am a cybersecurity major in school I enjoy building computers obviously and so I want to try and see if I can do that in that way in my free time I can play a game so the keyboard is a lot sturdier than you would expect the material of the case seems to mostly be in aluminum it's not plastic so that is really nice on the construction materials and the keyboard seems very firm and secure it's not like a lot of the ones that are really flexible and flimsy and everything. This one's feel is really nice and it, it definitely gives it a quality feel to it. There is, however, no 10 key because of the size of it, which is disappointing to me because I, I enjoy the 10 key, but for size, I understand it wasn't a possibility. Uh, my daughter, who is uh, a senior right now, she commented on the keyboard saying that they seem bigger than most of the keyboard keys on her keyboard, but she also has an 11 or 11.6 inch screen laptop, so it would make sense that these keys would be bigger. If they'd gone smaller, they may have fit a 10 key on, 
but then you get the smaller keys and the quality just would not have kept up. So the battery life on this is not as good as the Lenovo. Um, leaving this un unplugged and just in like it is right now, it will burn through its battery in about three to five days just on standby with nothing actually running. Whereas the Lenovo that I've done review, and I'll try and remember to link that up here as well, but I, again, I may, may very well forget. Um, that one will last well over a week on standby. And even the limited use that I use for school, it would last a week, possibly even two on a single charge. This may be a week on a single charge, if that. It's already getting down to the bare minimum and it's only been unplugged for a couple of days. So the battery life on this one is not as great as the Lenovo. It is, however, decent for use. And if you power it off completely, I'm sure the battery life would be better. So do keep that in mind. I did notice that because it is aluminum, it not only gathers fingerprints, but it scratches very easily. But aside from that, it does seem very sturdy and it is a very nice laptop. And I have no problems recommending it as long as you understand those limitations that the battery is not the best, um, but it is better than a standard laptop. Like if you got a gaming laptop, you're looking at an hour to three hours battery life. This you're going to get a lot longer battery life out of than that. It just isn't as good as the Lenovo, for instance. Um, I did have to upgrade the storage on this from 256 gigabytes. I went with a one terabyte NVMe. And although it only has five screws that are captive screws on the bottom, I did notice that it does not seal back up very well. There's a gap now where I had pulled it apart and I didn't break any of the, any of the little nodules that I'm aware of, but it still won't line up perfectly again. So do keep in mind that if you do open it to upgrade it, you may very well end up not having it sealed completely tight again. So it looks maybe slightly different than you expect. The NVMe upgrade though was very easy. I used the same method that I showed you with the Asus um, that I gave to my daughter. I used the same method to do that here. There's only the one slot. It is occupied by the 256 gigabyte module that comes with it. And so I went and I used the USB-C connected um, external drive for the NVMe and, and I just copied it over using um, Macrium Reflect and then I installed it and it worked perfectly fine. No issues at all. So it, it's been great. I did notice that it does say Elite Book on the hinge here which is kind of cool. I do like that. I love the looks of it. I find it amazing and very professional. Um, the SC card, the security card, I'm not going to ever use it. If you're in business and using this for business, then you may use a security card of some kind to, that it would be able to read. But as a student, I'm not using anything that's using that. And so it's just a waste for me. I would much rather have an SD card reader than that, but that's a personal preference and you get what you get when you buy these. And I have no problem, like I said, recommending this laptop. It is very sleek, professional, it is nice and it's, although it's hefty, it's not heavy, if that makes sense. Like you feel the weight, but carrying it around for a long period shouldn't be an issue either. It's about the weight of a school book. So that aside, I think that covers pretty much everything. Like I said, the screen's 1080p. I believe it's IPS, but I'm not sure it could be TN. Um, it's not got the gloss to it, so it's kind of hard for me to tell, and I haven't looked up the specs, but it is 1080p, and it is a really nice screen that does very well, and the fact that it's not as shiny actually helps me when I'm in the bedroom and I'm typing on it. It makes it easier for me to read the screen and to use it without any glares. So, um, that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and close the video. I do hope that this review helps you to decide if this is the right laptop for you or not. Again, for a student or a business person, this laptop is excellent and I highly recommend it. For household use, for normal stuff, it's gonna be great, but it's not a gaming laptop. Although it does have the Iris XE graphics, which is better than the older integrated graphics, 
it is not a gaming laptop. So do keep that in mind. So as long as this helped you uh, figure out if this is the right laptop for you, I hope that you hit the like button down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button that should be in this general area here. And that way you can keep up to date on our new videos and our community section. And then as always, if you have any questions for myself, the channel, or about the product, make sure you leave those down below in the comment section or on Twitter at Towers Gray. So thank you for watching everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now.